All right, so in this video, we're gonna look at creating a master gold image, basically a virtual hard disk, because we're gonna use Hyper-V, that we can reuse to instantiate many servers, all right? And the advantage to this is clearly a time-saving thing in the fact that when we do this and we use sysprep, we have a general image that we can use over and over again. If you've ever installed a Windows operating system, whether it's a client or a server, you know there's a ton of updates that gets get installed. So we can shorten that whole time frame each and every time we install an operating system by having a master image. And of course, these work well in a production environment as well, where I can go in and create a master image for my accounting department, installing Microsoft Office for them, installing any plugins or updates that they need, their accounting software, whatever the case may be. And that way, if a machine goes down, I have this image to just quickly deploy. Okay, now that's for small businesses. Of course, later on, we'll talk about things like Windows Deployment Services, which allows us to create images that we can deploy over the network very efficiently to thousands of machines at a time. But let's go ahead and get started with our master image. I'm just gonna come up here and say new virtual machine, choose next. I'm gonna give the virtual machine a quick name like Windows Server 2012 R2, master image, master disk image. There we go. Gonna go ahead and store that. Don't really care where I store it, but uh, I, I have a bunch of, I keep my virtual machines and my My Documents, keep everything together. So I've already created a little folder for this. So I'll select that, I'll choose next. I'm gonna create a generation two and choose next. Here I'm gonna give it 4096, so four gigs of RAM. That should help it get through. I'm gonna connect it to my external so that I can have the updates get installed once I'm done. Don't need 127 gigs, 60 should be fine. Choose next. And I'm gonna install an operating system. So I have the ISO file in my documents. I'll come down here, software and drivers. There's my ISO, I'll choose next and finish. And as I finish, it goes ahead quickly creates that virtual machine and I'm ready to fire it up. So at this point, I'll just click and fire up the virtual machine for the first time. Now I do need to quickly catch it as soon as it connects and do the boot. Let me go ahead and move this all over here. There we go. And throughout this, I'll go ahead and pause when there's things that are gonna take a while, okay? So I just, Click next through that. I want the English edition, make any changes you want and do the install. Now at this point, I need to put in my Windows activation key. I don't wanna show that to you. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video. I would put this in again. If you don't have an activation key, you can do this with the trial. If you're just setting up a lab, you can have that go for 90 days uh, and get through some of your curriculum if you'd like. Let me go ahead and pause while I do that. Now after putting in the key, this is where I can decide, am I creating a master image for a server core installation or a master image ser for server with GUI? Well, since we're creating a lab to learn in, I'm gonna do GUI. One of my labs will be over integrating a core server. Accept the license agreement, choose next. I'm gonna do a custom install into that unallocated space and choose next. And then at this point, it'll go ahead and start the installation, get the files ready, install the features. And so once it gets down to finishing up, I'll go ahead and restart the video. So at this point, um, it's ready. It's gonna go ahead, it'll do a reinstall here and it will continue the installation. So by the way, don't be alarmed if it seems to restart a couple times, not a big deal, it's gonna go ahead and do that. At this point, I'm gonna put in a general password that I know that I can remember. This, by the way, is the first thing I'm gonna change when I deploy the image. So once it finalizes the settings, we can come in here, do a Control-Alt-Delete. Right there, sorry about that. Put in my master password and log into the machine. 
At this point, I'll go ahead and change this so that I have an image size that we can fully play with. I'll go ahead and make this full screen mode. There we go. Go ahead and connect to that network. Now this is the part that is gonna really save you a ton of time. I'm gonna come in here to local server. I don't need to worry about changing the computer name, configuring any IPs, anything like that, because again, I'm gonna generalize this image. So at this point, I'm gonna come over here to Windows Update. I'm gonna turn on automatic updates and allow it to install the updates. So I'll go ahead and pause and come back as I do updates. So as you can see, I've gone ahead and installed the first round of updates. I restarted the server and I'm just continuing the update process. All right, so as you can see, still installing updates. This is gonna save a ton of painful hours, especially if you're dealing with an old install file like I was here. So as you can see, it's currently installing 144 of 146 updates most likely I'm gonna to have to restart and see if there's more. And here we are, ready for the restart. So I'll go ahead and restart this machine. And yes, eventually we get to this point where we click on, let me go back, check for updates, and we run that, and we get this delightful little message that says there are no more updates. No updates are available. So at this point, we're done with the updates and we're ready to proceed to the next step. Now at this point, we can go ahead and clean the disk. Now if you're not familiar with this, in Server 2012, normally in Windows operating systems, we're able to come in here, right click, go to properties, and see this disk cleanup tool. Now, if you don't see that on your Windows Server 2012 edition, let me show you how to put that on. What we do is we go into Add Roles and Features. We'll choose Next through here. We're gonna do it on the role-based or feature-based installation. We'll choose Next. It's the default server that we're playing with, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump down here to Features. And from here, we're going to look for the user interface, which is right here. So if we expand user interfaces, if you see this desktop experience is not installed, go ahead and install it. That's what's gonna bring back your disk cleanup. So now what we can do is right click on the C drive, go to properties, choose disk cleanup, and let it do a discovery to see what kind of items we can clean up from this installation. So if you notice right now, it's saying 21.5 gigs, which is a pretty large file is being used for the operating system. I'm gonna go ahead and pause while this goes ahead and figures out what we can clean up. So as you can see, there's uh, some pretty good space that I'm gonna pick up, especially in the Windows Update Cleanup file, 1.14 gigs. I'm gonna come down here and select everything. There should be nothing in the recycle bin, all the temp files, everything that I can, and choose OK. Now at this point, it's gonna delete those files. I also can go in and look at system recovery files and delete those under more options as well. So once you've done with this, go back, look at the more options if you're doing a client and we'll be ready to go with the sysprep. So I'll go ahead and pause again while it cleans up my disk. All right, so with disk cleanup run, if you remember, we had about 25.1 gigs. I'm gonna go here to properties. We're gonna check it out. We're now down to 20.4, so definitely worthwhile to do that before running the next step. So finally, we're ready to sysprep this drive. So I'm gonna go into C and Windows, and we're gonna come down and find the system32 directory, and we'll go all the way down looking for sysprep. which is right there, we'll double click that. And here is the sysprep tool. So I'll just double click, run the sysprep tool. Different options and audit mode. I'm gonna do the out of box experience. I'm gonna generalize this. And instead of rebooting it, which I don't wanna do, I'm gonna go ahead and shut it down once I've sysprepped. So at this point, 
with everything checked, I just hit OK. And it's going to go ahead and clean up and generalize this disk image so that we can use it to create multiple Windows Server 2012 R2 editions. I'll go ahead and pause while it finishes the sysprep. So as you can see, the machine has gone ahead and shut down. I'm going to exit. I don't want to reinstall the machine. Finally, we'll just go in real quick. Drag this over. Go into my documents. Come down to my virtual machines. Here is our master disk image. So I don't need to worry about the virtual machine files. I just need to worry about this right here. So this is my master disk image. This is the one that I want to copy, put in a safe place. And what I'll do is I'll reuse this one when I create new virtual machines. So I don't have to go through that painstaking process of all the updates and the disk cleanups and et cetera the next time through. I hope this helps. Take care.